Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Frank, how's it going? I'm doing good. How about you, Rachel? Doing good. Um, I know there's a lot for us to cover today, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started. What do you think? Good idea. Let's do it. Awesome. So just in case no one knows, um, I'm Rachel Huffman. I work on the marketing team here at Butterfly MX. And with me today, we have Frank Freehill, who is on the technical solutions team. And just a little bit about what we're going to discuss today. Um, we're going to really just go through an overview of our elevator control system. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how it works with the rest of the Butterfly Mix Access platform, as well as more about how it's installed, configured, and supported, and last, just some frequently asked questions. Great. So it looks like there is a few people on here today who have attended some of our previous events. Um, but just in case you're new or aren't familiar with Butterfly Mix, I'll just do a quick intro. Uh, so Butterfly MX is a complete access control solution typically installed in multi-tenant buildings. Um, in fact, today we're currently installed in more than 10,000 multifamily, commercial, student housing, and gated communities across the country. And our products really just allow uh, property staff and residents to manage access on the go. And we host this monthly event to dive into each individual product and features that they include, as well as educate you on the specifics of the products, like what problems they solve, and of course, how to install them. Uh, so today, Frank will be discussing an overview of our elevator control system, and we encourage you all to ask questions. Feel free to just leave those in the chat, and we'll get to them at the very end. Uh, so Frank, take it away. Great. So thanks, Rachel. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining today. Uh, like Rachel said, my name is Frank, and you know I'm really excited to have the opportunity today to talk about our elevator control system. You know, For me personally, this is one of my favorite products at Butterfly Max because of its versatility, as well as the solution it's able to provide for, in my opinion, a very real problem. So like Rachel had mentioned over the next few slides, we'll be talking about how our elevator control system, why it's such a great solution, how it works within the Butterfly Max ecosystem, things like how it's installed, configured, supported. And we're also gonna walk through some use cases as well as how it's set up. So let's just jump right into it, right? Awesome. So to start this off, let's ask a question, right? Why our elevator control system? So today, many buildings are currently utilizing or they're moving towards a locked out elevator cab for additional cure, uh, security at their property. Residents in this case will need to present either a fob or a card and in some cases a pin code to be able to access either the elevator cab itself or the floor that that resident lives on. While this is great for security, it also introduces a problem. What about guests, deliveries, or other users that don't have a physical credential like a fob or access to a pin code? How can they reach the appropriate floor? In this use case, the resident will need to physically leave their apartment to come down to the lobby to receive each guest to bring them to their floor, or they'll need to come downstairs to pick up their food delivery. In this case, guests and deliveries get stuck in the lobby. It can be an inconvenience and a problem for both residents and property managers. And to me, that's where Butterfly Max's access control system comes in to provide the solution. So let's talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Thanks. So like I said, how does this solution work? Butterfly Max's elevator control system allows residents to remotely grant access to the elevator based on the existing permissions of that resident. So when a guest places a call from the video intercom and the guest grants access, and the resident, excuse me, grants access, our video intercom is able to communicate with the elevator control system to unlock the appropriate floor of that resident. This results in a seamless experience for the guest and the resident as well. Once access is granted at the front door, the guests will simply be able to walk themselves to the elevator and they can select the floor that they need to get to and only that floor. This maintains the existing security in place for unwanted visitors while also improving the resident and the guest experience. So now we know a little bit more about uh, you know, the solution that our elevator control system provides and how it works we can start to take a deeper dive into the hardware. So let's start. Great. So our elevator control system comes in two main configurations, our small, which we see here, and our large or rack mounted option that we'll look at in just a minute. So here we can see some of the hardware specs of the small, including the dimensions. We typically like to compare it to the size of a textbook. 
the small elevator control system is most commonly installed, uh, you know, in places like an existing shelf somewhere in an elevator control room or something like an IDF closet, for example. We could see it retails for $795, but if you are a certified Butterfly MX partner, the hardware does come with a $200 discount per device. Finally, just some additional numbers here and some information. Uh, the device is a network set of relays with eight dry contact outputs per board. It's a PoE device, so you'll need to introduce a PoE-enabled maybe CAT5e or CAT6 cable to provide both power and internet. Um, also, just as a side note for best practice, we do recommend using PoE+. Plus. Um, so I think that's just a little brief overview of the small elevator control system. We can take a minute now to look at the large or the rack-mounted version. So as we can see here, uh, the large or the rack mountable version can be expanded with additional boards to accommodate up to 64 relays. It's a standard rack size, so it can be easily introduced to an elevator control room or a network closet where they are or existing rack mounts, really seamless installation. Again, similar to the small version, it's a primarily PoE device. Again, we recommend PoE Plus for that. Uh, however, as you guys can see here, for certain larger installations, when many boards are going to be used, it can support the use of an external power supply to ensure that each board is receiving the appropriate amount of power. Uh, I think finally, what we can touch on here is that the ranges between the MSRP and the dealer pricing, it accounts for the total number of boards that's required for that particular project. So that's a little bit on the hardware. Let's look at the installation, configuration, and the support. So in terms of the configuration of the elevator control system, the setup is easy and straightforward. Like all of our other hardware offerings, the elevator control system is managed through our online dashboard, Butterfly MX OS. While our support team will take care of all of the programming for you, there are a few important things to know in terms of the initial setup. First, after you've completed the installation of the hardware, you'll need to give our support team a call while you're still on site and provide the serial number of the device. Our support team is also going to ask you which relays on the elevator control hardware are wired to each floor. So as an example, that relay one on board one is wired to the first floor. Programming can be done in real time and our support team will also be able to test the relays with you, again, to just ensure everything is working as expected and the appropriate floors are being unlocked. Once that's complete, you have a fully operational system. And then, you know, speaking of installations and setups, uh, we also wanted to spend some time just quickly walking you through some of the most common configurations of our elevator control system. Uh, I think just to start, typically, Elevators with lockout schemes will fall into two categories. One that we describe as a floor by floor, which pretty self-explanatory means each individual floor is unlocked, but anyone can access the cab. It's just once you're in the cab, you'll need to present a credential to get to the appropriate floor. Additionally, uh, there's also the universal, sometimes known as the global lockout scheme. Uh, that's just where the lobby button remains locked, but once you gain access to the elevator cab, you can reach any floor. So now that we know a little bit more about the most common lockout schemes, let's talk about some common use cases where the Butterfly MX elevator control system can be introduced. This first one, we have a floor by floor lockout in a building that has a single elevator cab and six total floors. For this use case, you would only need to introduce one of our small elevator control systems. As you can see on the right, each output of the Butterfly MX is wired to the appropriate input that restricts access to a particular floor. Once a resident grants access to the visitor, the elevator control system will trigger the relay that corresponds to that resident's floor so the guest can have that seamless access to get to, in this case, maybe the fourth floor and the fourth floor only. That's a little bit on a floor by floor lockout with one elevator cab. Let's look at another example here, um, which is similar to the one that we just looked at, with really the difference here being that this building has two cabs that are side by side. Residents and guests need access to both cabs as it's typically unknown which cab will arrive first when it's called from the lobby. So in order to provide access to either cab, you'll see that we need to run the wires from the Butterfly Max elevator control system to each of the cabs in parallel. This allows both elevator cabs to have the appropriate floor unlocked 
allowing a more seamless experience for the guest to be able to get in whichever elevator arrives first, as opposed to a designated elevator, one or the other, which they may not know. And finally, the last use case that we're going to look at today is for the universal or sometimes known as the global lockout scheme that I described earlier. In this example, access to the cab itself is restricted. However, once you've been granted access, you can get to any floor in the building. In this case, only one output on the elevator control system will need to be utilized and it will be tied to that lobby button. Once a resident has granted access to a visitor, our hardware will be able to unlock that lobby button so the guests can access the elevator cab. And like I said, once inside, they can access any of the floors. So that's three of the probably most common use cases that we see. And now that we've talked through some of those, we also want to spend some time addressing commonly asked questions that we receive about our elevator control system. And the first one, as we can see here, is, you know, does the elevator control system provide that lockout scheme? Here, the answer is no. Our elevator control system only has the ability to unlock a previously locked floor. Typically, what we see is that the lockout scheme is provided either by the elevator controller or an associated access control board. I think the main thing to recognize here is that in order to be eligible to introduce our elevator control system, there must be an existing lockout scheme at the property or there must be additional equipment scoped into the project to provide a lockout scheme if one does not exist already. Let's look at another question. Great. So is a video intercom required at the elevator and how do these things communicate with another? So the answer here is that no, the, an intercom is not required to be installed at the elevator. The intercom and the elevator control system are able to communicate with each other through the building's network so no physical wiring is actually required between the two. You know, to me, this makes the introduction of both, of both of these devices a lot easier because it eliminates the need for long and sometimes complicated wire runs from maybe the front door to somewhere like the elevator control room where the elevator control system is going to live or essentially be installed. Once the intercom receives a valid credential, it will signal the elevator control system to fire the appropriate output for that resident. And like I mentioned, this can be done from really anywhere in the building. Most commonly though, we see the front entrance. Uh, and again, this means you don't need to physically install that video intercom at the elevator lobby for the elevator to be unlocked. Last question, how long does the elevator stay open for? Uh, I really like this question because the great thing about our elevator control system is that it's completely customizable through our software and the addition of physical hardware timers are not necessary. So our default elevator timer is 60 seconds, but as I mentioned, this can be updated device to device depending on the needs of the property. For example, you might have a building that there's a long walk from the front door to the elevator bank. You might want that timer to be a little bit longer. Um, and you know, sometimes it's wiser to extend that to give the guests an appropriate amount of time to be able to enter the building and walk to the elevator. I think an important note here, that a question that comes up quite a bit, is is there a limit uh, on what we can have for the timers? And the answer is no. There is no limit that the relays can be set for. However, it's always important to consider convenience as well as security. We don't want you know, the timers to be 15 minutes um, because again, it's just kind of common sense. Um, I think kind of finally, the great thing about the timers is that they can be updated both remotely and in real time. So, you know, should a building want to either reduce or add time to the timers based on real use cases and um, guests and users experience, all they need to do is contact our support team and we can make the adjustments for them. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> cool. Well, it actually looks like we are getting pretty close to the end. So I did want to take some time to go through a few of the questions that were submitted throughout the presentation. Um, right. Looks like the first question we got is, is the elevator control system a standalone product? Love that question. Um, so the answer is no, it's not. Um, our elevator control system requires either, like I was mentioning, a video intercom to be installed at the property, uh, as well as, or potentially a two-door uh, cloud access controller. Uh, since this was our elevator control system webinar, we didn't get too much into the video intercom of the two-door controller. Um, but we have touched upon these devices in past webinars, 
And I'm sure you can find them on the website, right, Rachel? Yep, yep, they would be on the Great. event page. So, you know, if you need more information on either the video intercom, the two-door cloud controller, check out the website. We've done previous webinars and you can learn a little bit more. You can always reach out if you have any other questions on those devices. Awesome. So the next question we got is, are there any differences between the two elevator control systems? I should have touched on that. It's a good question as well. Um, so here, in terms of functionality, no, uh, they really operate in the same way. You know, I would say that the main difference between them is size, obviously, um, and then the number of outputs that each device can support. You know, what I think we most commonly see is in larger buildings or, you know, maybe buildings where there are not as many available PoE cables, the large rack mounted version would be preferable. And then, you know, maybe in a smaller elevator control room, you might not have room for a rack. Um, so in terms of sometimes overall space that you have to work with, again, in those cases, it might be preferable to install our small elevator control hardware rather than the rack mount. So, you know, really, I'd say overall that while the functionality is the exact same between the two devices, there definitely are certain projects or use cases where one would be preferable to use over the other. Um, and again, what's great is that if you ever need assistance in determining, hey, what is the best hardware for my project? We do have teams here that you can reach out to, happy to help you put that together. Awesome. Thanks, Frank. Uh, we have time for one more question, I think. So this one is, do the elevator controls integrate with the building's property management system? Yes, they do. So uh, in this case, all Butterfly Max hardware is going to be able to seamlessly integrate with the Butterfly Max operating system, the BMX OS, sometimes it's referred to. Um, so it's really our OS that integrates with the building's property management software, allowing building managers, property managers to only need to maintain one database rather than multiple. So, you know, again, this helps make access simple for buildings, property managers, you know, the users as well. Um, in terms of integrations, we currently have integrations with really all of the big names in property management software. Off the top of my head, the Yardy, RealPage, Rent Manager, I guess just to name a few. Um, but our teams are always working on adding integrations and um, something that we're always busy working on. Awesome. Well, it looks like we are out of time, unfortunately. Um, so of course, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. If you have any other questions or would just like some more information, feel free to give us a call, or you can also reach us at sales at butterflymex.com. Um, also, if you are ready to go ahead and get certified as an installer, visit us at butterflymex.com slash cert. And again, thanks for joining. I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks everyone for joining.